what's happening guys it's eric with the hot box pizza truck good morning got art in the truck again um he's gonna learn how to make some dough today so we're gonna take you guys along for the ride and uh, i'll do my best to explain uh what's going on oven's getting going we just lit the fire so let's go thing we need double zero flour I do uh, we're gonna do two batches we're only gonna take you on the ride for one of them because uh, two batches because these fit in my cooler in a about the maximum amount I like to make is 25 because when it rises it'll start pushing on the lid and that's when I like to go ahead and roll them if I do more dough than that, then it, it blows the lid off. It's just too much for that. So we're going to make a batch of 25. I'm going to start with our flour. This particular deal is uh, actually 15 larges and uh, 10 smalls. And then I'll make another batch of just larges after this. Um, so this one is uh, 3892. In grams is my flour. Make sure you guys can see what's going on here. Oh, yeah. So it's 3892. For this particular. And another for the big ones? This is uh, 10 small and 15 large. Gotcha. So you already have your split there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already got all my numbers. So either way, your flour into your mixing bowl. You want me to grab the camera here? Now, we'll bring it over in a second. Get your hook on, get all set up. Let's keep this off to the side. Of the and uh, this particular um, amount of flour I have, we're working with 63% um, with the water uh, hydration. hydration. That's the word I was looking for. So 63% hydration works out to be uh, 2,413 grams. So what I do is you want some of that taken away to heat up, to heat the water up so you can activate the yeast. So what I do is out of the 2,413, I just go ahead and get 413 grams of water because it's easy in my brain. That leaves me with 2,000 grams of cold water. And I already preheat some water up in my microwave so I don't have to mess with it. So whether you just take the whole amount of water and then separate a little bit and heat it up or whatever, as long as, I hope you guys follow what's going on here. So out of the 2,413 grams of water I need, here's 413 grams of warm water, and then the rest, the 2,000, will be cold. And I just use filtered water. I don't want to get in any debates. time when it's drier out and the humidity is way less I might put an extra few grams of water in there we've had rain the last couple days humidity's high it actually makes a difference you can you can tell in the dough when it's been raining and the humidity's up in here it, it absolutely 100% makes a difference all right so 
So we got our cold water, we got our warm water. Let's get our yeast. In this particular deal, we need uh, 18 grams. just a tad warm so I'm just gonna add a little bit of the cold in there to bring the temperature down feels good add our yeast in there I don't have the patience to let it sit there and dissolve so I bust the fork out yeast and I just start mixing This is the exact way I do it every day. Like I say, I just may add a, a tad bit more water if it's uh, if it's dry out. In the winter time, I definitely bump up my uh, my hydration just a little bit. See, it's getting all dissolved now. Italian sea salt, big old container of it. Let's take you guys over here. Let's see here. We'll ride like that for a minute, then I'll bring you guys even closer in a second. So we kick it on. Yeast first. Everybody's got their own technique here. This is what I do. You do whatever you want. Some people like water, then flour, some people yeah, get whatever. There's a lot of ways to, to make it happen. I'm showing you guys how I do it. What's the size of the mixer? 20 quart Hobart mixer. This is a 1953. I completely rebuilt it, got it primered up, never did get around to painting it. One of these days I might do it. I'd love to put a nice little candy red or something on it. Now it's cold water. All right, water's in, while that's mixing, I'm gonna get my salt together which is 115 grams for this particular batch. We're just letting it come together right now. There's no time to measure, just like by the loop of it? Yeah, you just go by. You can see when the bottom, see how it's, you got some that's not incorporated in the ball. Once she starts getting real close to be fully incorporated, that's when I put in the salt. People add salt at the different, different times. I was taught, or I learned, or I read somewhere that the salt can kill the yeast. So I put it in at the end for that reason. And the other reason is it helps to clean your bowl. You know, it's like throwing sandpaper in there. It takes all that extra dough that's stuck on the side and it gets it mixed in there with it. So we're getting close. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the salt in. A couple little shakes at a time. There's superior mixers out there from this one, but this old girl. 
1953 Hobart doesn't play. It's the truck rocking and rolling. Do you recommend the 20 size or if people can go with bigger or smaller? Whatever your volume is, you know, whatever. And the trucks, you go much bigger than a 20, I think, you know, you're looking at room problems, space problems, I guess, but I don't know. The 20 does the job for me. I could, I'm sure I could load it with more than this, but um, this old girl, I just I just let her do her thing. I don't want to overwork her. Knock on wood, she's been a good, good piece of equipment for me. So you can see it's starting to come together now. I'm gonna let it go for another minute and then I like to shut the mixer off and flip the dough ball over so that way it gets a good mix. Again, I'm, there's more superior mixers with double paddles and the bowl spins and all kinds of stuff, but um, you gotta work with what you have and once you learn how to use it or the tricks, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put, put you back here on the stand a minute, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip the dough over, and then we'll get it rocking and rolling again.